you're ever lost in a forest, you should check the trees to see which side the moss is growing on. Then take out your cell phone and call someone to tell them how dumb you are. The next step in the ultimate tool cabinet build, frame and panel doors. Today, raise panels. As with anything in woodworking, there's a lot of ways to do frame and panel doors. I mean, there's special bits that you can buy if you like spending a lot of money. If you like doing it by hand, you can use a hand plane. That's what I'm going to try today. What I'm trying to say is sometimes it's just fun to get out the hand tools and try something different. Of course, in the old-timey days, they had specialized hand planes that were cut in a profile so that you could have that special look to your raised panels. I'm just going to do it with a regular number four smoother. I've never done this before. I saw it done one time, and it looked like a lot of fun. So we'll see how it works out. I don't remember exactly how I saw this done, but it seems to me the final thickness of the edge, which I marked with my marking gauge, is key. So I start each edge by planing a steep bevel up to that line. Then I lay it flat on the bench and I can start working it to the angle that I really want. I don't really hold a protractor up to this to try to guess what angle. I just go with the width of my plane and I get the first one done and now I'll try to match the other ones to that. One thing I do know is that you want to do the end grain portions of the panel first because it's pretty likely that you're going to tear out. And if you do the end grain first, then when you get that long grain on the other edges, it'll clean it up. This would be a lot easier to do with a longer plane, like this number six. It has a long toe, which makes it easier to keep it flat on the board. But not everybody has a short joiner like a number six, so I'm sticking to the number four. I assume everybody's got this one. Some people call it long grain. Some people call it side grain. I don't know what you call it, but I love to plane it. This is where you get the nice curl. I'm telling you, when the blade is sharp and the curls are flowing, there is nothing in the world like hand planing. This is why we still come back to these old tools in a world full of power. Now this is my very first raised panel with a hand plane and my stock was kind of warped. But I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out. A little more work to even out the bevels, maybe some light sanding or scraping, and it's going to look pretty good. Now some people like the center portion of their panel to be raised proud of the bevels. To do that, I would have cut some grooves with the table saw when I started out, and then I'd get out one of my rabbit planes, because this would cut right up to a line, rather than having to have an even bevel from surface to surface. This is the way they would have done it in the old timey days. So the results are in and it was fun. I like doing it with a number four. If I only had one or two to do and I was doing a rustic piece, I think I would do it again. It is a workout though, but I figure after you do a few of them, you'll get used to it. I mean, Roy Underhill does stuff all the time that would just wear me out. I always feel like there's a jig for just about anything that you want to do. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to take the time to build it. And that's what we do a lot here at the Stuffing Apps Workshop. It's almost like a test shop sometimes. We're trying out new ideas, new jigs, and then we put them together and the good ones we show to you guys. Otherwise, we throw them in the trash or in the burn barrel. I don't know why you would skin a cat, but they say there is more than one way to do it. This jig is a unique way to cut raised panels with power. It's designed to make fast and easy raised panels with a router without having to spend a hundred bucks or more on a fancy raised panel bit. The basic shape I saw on the internet once, I can't quite remember where, but I remembered enough that I could make this, adding of course a lot of my own design features. All you need to build it is some scraps of plywood or MDF, a router which you probably already have, and 
the longest straight router bit you can get. I designed it so you could use the fancy profile special raised panel bits if you've got lots of money to spend, but you can also just use a straight router bit if you want to do some nice simple raised panels for cheap. I found it to be more accurate and even safer than doing it on the table saw with the special jig and having to change the bevel angle of the blade. You can even flip it over and cut a rabbit on the back that some of those special complex race panel bits will do. That's something that really sets it apart from a simple table saw jig. It's actually a really great way to cut rabbits or tongues on the edge of any panel. It's fully adjustable up and down and the angle can change however you want it. Rails and styles, even angled mortise and tenon joints can be made by using a sled that runs in a miter track. It has T-tracks on top that provide a lot of clamping options and multiply what this machine can do. T-tracks, great for making all sorts of jigs. I don't know what we did without it, but it's expensive. And this machine needs two long pieces of it. Why don't we just make our own? I cut a couple of dados in the sled that fit the T-track nut just perfectly. Then you add some quarter inch hardboard that just overlaps that dado a little bit on each side, forming a T-track. Actually two T-tracks in this case. It saved me like 17 bucks. Now I have lots of places to put hold downs to hold all sorts of different stock as I run it through the machine. And simply changing the angle of the table can totally change the profile of the bit. The best part is how easy it stows away. There's no base, it's just held in your vise. So when you're done, you quickly just disassemble it. Take off your router to use on something else, fold it up, and stick it somewhere in the shop until you're going to need it again. In a perfect world, every router-based jig would have its own router, so we didn't have to switch back and forth between them. In fact, I think we should have a router for every bit. Imagine how handy that would be. But the fact is, routers are expensive. And so we need a good way to swap between jigs. And I guess we're just going to have to change bits. Quite a while ago, I discovered the Milescraft turn lock system. They're replacement base plates for your router that have this locking mechanism in the center. It makes switching collars a whole lot easier. It wasn't long before they adapted that turn lock principle into all sorts of things, from pattern routing and inlay to circle cutting jigs and even sign cutting machines. To do it, they designed that little turn lock not just in the center of the base plate, but the same thing as on the outside so it can lock in and out of the jigs quickly. You can use this to your advantage if you want to use one router on several different jigs and machines. By adding some hardwood tabs, you can just twist and lock the router in place, and when you're done, take it off. It's one of the best innovations to hit routers since, well, my new raised panel router jig. So, another contest. We're thinking about a jig building contest. Of course, that doesn't mean you have to make something really complicated. Jigs come in all shapes and sizes. Some are really complex. Some are very simple. All of them can be extremely useful. So please submit your jig ideas. And you don't even have to invent it yourself. If it's something that you've used and it's handy and there's no patent protecting it, submit it. But if you know who invented it, give them credit too and we'll try to pass that along to the viewers. Take a picture, send it to us or post it on lumberjocks.com as a project with Stumpy in the title and we'll award prizes for the best jigs and we'll also do another show that will give honorable mentions to those of you that submit and maybe don't win the top three prizes. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Remember, it doesn't have to be complicated. It just has to be useful. Well, it's tax day, it's April 15th. You know, I wonder if it's a coincidence that the IRS chose April 15th for the day the taxes are due. Because April 15th was already a day that not a lot of people looked forward to. A lot of bad things have happened on April 15th. The Titanic sunk. That's right, like 1,500 people died April 15th, 1912. 100 years ago today, in fact. Abraham Lincoln died on April 15th. He was shot the night of the 14th. 
he died the morning of the 15th. In fact, if you Google it, you'll find that lots of bad things have happened on April 15th. I was born on April 15th. So not only do I have to pay my taxes, but I have to get another year older. Of course, as each April 15th comes and I get another year older, I fall further behind in technology. I used to know everything there was to know about computers, but computers of the 90s are nothing like computers of today. Now there's all kinds of things going on in those, inside those things that I sometimes just feel stupid. So I signed up for not just Facebook, but Twitter. I mean, Twitter. I used to make fun of people on Twitter. I used to think they were the guys that were sitting in the bathroom tweeting, I'm going to the bathroom. Nobody wants to know what you're doing every second of the day. But then I realized that Twitter is for all kinds of things. There's woodworking communities that use Twitter to have conferences, to solve problems, and to talk about projects. Really, it's great. So if you're on Twitter, follow Stumpy Nubs. I promise not to fill your inbox with a bunch of junk. I'm not going to tweet you and tell you that I sneezed and this is the color of what came out. Only good stuff and only once in a while. So sign up because we're just getting started and we've only got a few followers so far and it looks kind of pathetic. So we need your help. Then you can sit back, have a cold one. Just don't tweet me about it.